Okay, so I feel like the fusion page of DaVinci Resolve has a bad reputation of being incredibly hard to learn, but the truth is, it really isn't. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about 3D in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Like, for example, lighting, composition, how to texture them, and so on. You get the idea. This is also a beginner guide, and that means that I'll be explaining everything in detail. So it doesn't matter if you know how to edit or not, because you'll be able to understand this seemingly hard lesson pretty easily. So, let's open up DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so we're in DaVinci Resolve. First thing we need to do is bring our footage, which I have right here, and our FBX models, which I got for free from Sketchfab. Let's create a Fusion Composition, and then go into the Fusion page. Because we've created a Fusion Composition, we don't have a Media In node, we only have a Media Out. So, we'll bring out our video. Before connecting it to the media out, we need to understand what we want to do. We want to create a 3D scene. And to create a 3D scene, we need at least two nodes. We need a camera and we need a renderer. But because I also want to add a 2D video, we need to somehow plaster this onto a 3D plane. To do that, we're just going to bring an image plane and connect our media in to the plane. Now, if we change the view so that we can see the image plane, we can actually see our image. But we need to adjust the position because the camera is too close to our video. Okay, great. Now we have the scene and we need to add our 3D objects. First, you need to make sure you have them extracted and not zipped. And then we'll go into the Fusion tab, right at the top, Import, and then FBX Scene. Here, we'll just select our FBX file and we'll get this menu. So, the FBX file actually has a lot of information from the 3D object like the hierarchy of the elements, animation, cameras, and so on. But right now we just want the 3D object, not everything. So we're gonna disable all of the settings and just keep the meshes one. The material setting is also a bit of a tricky one, because it often breaks the 3D object. You can experiment with this setting yourself, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just manually add our textures. Okay, so let's just click on OK. And now, as you can see, we have our object. But if we switch to its view, we can see that it actually has no texture. Obviously, we removed the textures. So, let's just fix that. We'll go into the texture folder and add all of the textures that we need. Like, for example, the base color, normal roughness, and so on. Before we actually bring them in, we need to add another node, which is called a blend node. But we actually have two different textures we need. So, we have the frame texture and the image texture. So we'll need two blim nodes. Depending on the complexity of your model, you'll have a bunch of different texture files. Like for example, one for roughness, one for the normal map, and so on. We'll just connect them, and then we'll start bringing the textures in. The blim node lets you connect all of the textures to your 3D object. Right now, our 3D objects are the frame and the image. And as you can see, it has a lot of different inputs. For example, the yellow one, the pink one, the white one, and so on. The yellow one is for your base texture. So for example, the base texture is this, so we're just gonna connect it. The cyan one is for the roughness, so we're gonna bring that in and connect it. The green one is for shininess, but we don't really have the shiny map, so we're just ignore it. The white one is for the opacity, but again, we don't have the opacity map, so we're gonna let it just exist. And the pink one is for the normal map, which we have right here. Okay, so we have all of them connected, and because we connected it to the frame, you can see that our texture appeared. Now we just need to do the same for the image. Okay, great. Now we have the finished object. So we're just going to group it up and then connect it to our composition. But how exactly do we do that? Well, we cannot really connect it to the renderer itself because then it'll override our plane. So we need to do something different. We need to bring out a merge node, connect it to the merge node and connect the plane to the merge node as well. You need to make sure that the connection points are at the white triangles and then bring this square to the renderer. Now, if you switch to the merge node, you can actually see our composition. But we also need to be able to move this without breaking the actual object. So we'll click on this group and add a 3D transform node. Right here. Now we'll just scale it down so that it doesn't look so bad. Zoom it in so that we can actually see what we're doing, right? And rotate it so that it looks good. Okay, that's great. We added the 3D object in our composition as you can see right here but it kind of looks bad, and that's because it's flat, it has no shadows. If you don't use any lighting in your scene and the renderer doesn't have lighting and shadows enabled, then everything will be evenly lit, and as you can see there are no shadows, and everything looks flat and unrealistic because life doesn't work that way. So we need to fix it. To do that, 
we just need to add some lights. So we're gonna add two different lights. The first one will be a directional light and the second one will be a spotlight. We'll just connect them to the white triangles and go into the render node to enable lighting and shadows. If you actually rotate the directional light, you can see that the light in our scene changes as well. We'll find a spot that looks good and we'll use the spotlight as a key light. So we'll have to drop down the intensity so it doesn't blow everything out of proportion. But as you can see, it doesn't look realistic because the shadows are interacting with our image plane. We of course don't want that to happen, so we'll actually have to disable this on our own. But that's actually pretty easy. We're gonna go into the image plane, go into the lighting and turn off shadow receiver. Great, now we just have to make sure that everything is nicely lit and that's it. Now we have our 3D objects in our 3D scene. For my own video, I added a bunch of different models, only one ambient light, and I grouped all of the models into a single group, like as you can see right here. I then rendered it, added some nice effects, some color grading, and it ended up looking like this, which was actually pretty nice. Well, that's it. It really isn't that hard and it just needs a bit of practice. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer each and every one of them. Also, subscribe for more editing and personal branding videos because I also post videos on how to grow and make money from a personal brand. If you liked this video, like it. If you disliked it, well, dislike it and see you in the next one. Bye.